In this tutorial, we'll show you how to assign and interactively edit materials on your objects. This video does not include information on how to create materials. Please see the materials video tutorial for detailed information on creating materials. In this tutorial, we'll cover three tools. The paint tool, which is used to assign a new material to an object or the face of an object. The map texture tool, which allows you to assign a different mapping type to an object or face and the Edit Texture tool, which is used to interactively adjust the orientation, size, and position of the texture live in the modeling window. We'll begin by looking at how a material is assigned to an object. When an object is first created, Form Z assigns the active material to that object. For example, we'll create a 3D solid wall by selecting the Rectangle tool in the 3D Enclosure icon, and when we create that object, you can see that since Material 1, which is a white generic material, since that's active, that's the color that's assigned to the object. Now let's click on Material 2, which is a brown color. So we'll select the Roof tool, click on the top face of the wall, and when the roof is created, you can see that it takes on the color of the active material, which is Material number 2. To assign a new color to the object, simply pick a new color in the Materials palette and select the Paint tool. Click on the object and the object will take on the new color. You can also assign colors to individual faces. Pick the color, and with the Paint tool active, hold on the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows and select any face. And the material is assigned to just the one face of the object. It should be noted that you don't have to use the Paint tool to assign a material to an object. Just simply drag and drop it onto the object. You can also hold down the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows and drag and drop the material onto a single face. And now let's apply some texture maps to our objects. Let's edit material number one. We'll go into the predefined libraries, and let's choose a brick material. For material number two, let's modify that. Let's give it a roof material. So in the predefines, we'll choose the roof library, and choose the desired roof material, and add those settings to our current parameters for material number two. For more information on creating materials, please see the materials video tutorial. Let's drag and drop the brick material onto the walls, and drag and drop the roof material onto the top object for the roof. When an object is first created, the type of mapping that best suits its shape is automatically assigned to it. The size of the texture is determined by the default texture size of the material. This is the real-world dimension that corresponds to one placement of the texture. For example, if a texture map of a brick pattern consists of five bricks horizontally and the bricks are eight inches long, the size parameter should be set to 40 inches in order for the brick texture to appear accurate. It is not critical that this parameter is set correctly because you can adjust the location, orientation, and size of the texture interactively by using the Edit Texture tool. Select the Edit Texture tool and click on any face of the object and a set of controls are displayed. Click on one arrow and we can modify the texture horizontally. Click on the other arrow and we can change the size vertically. Click on the center arrow and we can scale both horizontal and vertical size and keep it constrained. We can click on the bullet and move the texture anywhere on the surface and click on the circle to rotate that texture. Also observe in the Tool Options palette that everything we change dynamically in the modeling window can also be modified numerically in the Tool Options. Click on another face of the object. Observe that the changes to the size are applied to all the other faces of the object, but changes to the location and rotation are independent on each face. This makes it nice to properly align the texture on different faces of the object, but yet keep a uniform scale for all the faces. To demonstrate this concept with another example, we'll align the bricks around the corner of the wall. First, click on the side face and drag the center arrow to scale the brick for the desired object. Second, I'll move the bullet to reposition the texture on the side face so the brick texture aligns at the corner. That's it. It's just that easy. Sized and positioned in just two steps. You will see that the automatic mapping that Form Z applies to your objects should be sufficient in the majority of cases. But if needed, a new mapping type can be reassigned to an object or faces of an object using the Map Texture tool. For example, we'll insert an opening into the wall by selecting the Rectangle Drawing tool, and with the 3D Extrude icon selected, we can simply draw on the face of the object and push it through to subtract an opening. Select the Edit Texture tool and click on any face inside the window frame. 
And notice that all of these faces are automatically grouped together so they can be scaled together as a separate group. In the majority of cases, this is the desired result. If not, you can use the Map Texture tool to reassign mapping to the object. In the Tool Options palette, we'll select Mapping Type Best Match Per Face. In addition, the Wrap Texture Size will determine the new texture size of the object. Click on the object and all of the mapping is reassigned to all faces of the object and they are regrouped as a single group of faces. To see this, we can use the Edit Texture tool, click on any face of the object and you can see they are all grouped together as a single group of textured faces. What if we want to assign a different texture on only one part of our object and resize it independently from the rest of the object? For example, let's say we want to apply some siding on one wall and resize it independently from the brick texture on the other wall. We'll begin by using the Offset Segment tool. By clicking on the corner edge of the brick wall, we can offset a segment about the width of one brick. Now we want to assign a new server style to that side face. Go to the Materials palette. Let's edit Material 3. Let's go into the Predefines and choose the Siding Library and choose the type of siding that we want. I want to assign that siding to just the side face, so I hold down the Command Can Mac or Control Can Windows and drag and drop it onto just that face. If I use the Edit Texture tool, and click on that side face, you'll see that if I were to scale the size of that texture, that all the faces are grouped together, so it also modifies the size of the brick, which is not the desired result. So we'll have to remap or reassign mapping onto the side face. Select the Map Texture tool, hold down the Command Can Mac or Control Can Windows, and click on just that face to reassign mapping just on that one individual face. Now if I were to use the Edit Texture tool, you can see that I can resize the texture on that face independently from the size of the textures on the other faces of the object. And we'll conclude this tutorial with a brief look at the different mapping systems that are automatically or manually applied to your objects in Form Z. Cubic mapping is automatically applied to objects that are cubic in nature, such as a primitive cube. The texture is projected in six different directions onto the faces of the object. The resizing can be done in the XY, YZ, or ZX orientation. You can also edit the texture in 3D. This allows you to modify the origin along the X, Y, or Z axis, and also modify the rotation of the cubic projection by modifying the X, Y, or Z rotation angles by clicking on the rings. Let's create some other objects. Select the vector line tool in the 3D enclosure icon and begin drawing a vector line. And then we'll switch over to the arc tool. And then we'll double click and extrude that into a solid wall. Use the Edit Texture tool and observe that if you click on any of the flat faces that flat mapping is automatically applied in the proper orientation on any of the flat surfaces. Click on the curved surface and you'll see that cylindrical mapping is automatically applied. So the horizontal size is an angle, the vertical height is a length, and the position is cylindrically mapped around that curved surface. Spherical mapping is automatically applied to spherical type curved faces. For example, create a sphere and select the Edit Texture tool, click on the object, and you can see that spherical mapping is automatically applied. This spherical mapping system curves the texture both horizontally and vertically across that curved surface. We can also click on the bullet to control where that texture starts anywhere on that 3D spherical surface. In this example, we'll union a cylinder to a sphere. Select the Cylinder tool and create a solid cylinder, and then select the Sphere tool, snap to the center and snap to the end, and then using the Boolean Union tool, we will union those two objects together to create one single object. Let's see what kind of mapping is applied to this object. Select the Edit Texture tool, click on the bottom face, and you see flat mapping is applied to the bottom face. Click on the outside cylindrical face and observe that there's cylindrical mapping on that part of the object. And I think you guessed it. If you click on the top spherical curve surface, there's spherical mapping automatically applied to that. So you can see that Form Z is a wonderful job of automatically mapping these different mapping systems onto any type of object. UV coordinate mapping will freeze the texture at the points of the object. This option is not automatically applied to any type of object. This option is selected manually after you are done mapping your object. For example, we'll create a box by extruding a rectangle. 
And then using the Edit Texture tool, we can reshape and resize the automatic mapping system that's applied to the object. At this point, if we were to move a single segment of the object, you can see that the flat mapping system that is automatically projected on the object extends and repeats across the face of the object. In many cases, this is the desired effect. Let's change this to a UV system. Click on the object with the Map Texture tool. Change the mapping type to be UV Coordinates. Now the texture is now frozen onto the faces of the object. So now if we move a segment, observe that the texture is frozen at the points of the object, which causes the texture to stretch as we change the shape. And the last mapping type is parametric mapping, which is automatically applied to NURBS objects. For example, we'll do a NURBS loft on two different lines, and we have a NURBS surface. Let's apply a texture on this. Modify the texture by going to the fabric library and choose a nice little fabric material like we have here and that's applied to the object. If you use the Edit Texture tool, notice that that texture is automatically, parametrically mapped on the object. So now we can just simply drag two handles to modify the U and V size of that texture as it's mapped on that surface. We can also change the start position. And as I change that start position, you can see that that is parametrically rolling across the curvature of that NURB surface. Another example would be the NURBS by Boundary Curves. With that tool selected, we click on four different curves, and it'll fit a NURBS surface inside the boundary of those four curves. Let's apply an interesting material to that. Let's choose from the laminate library, find an interesting texture. We'll apply those predefined settings to our current material, which is applied to the object. Now we'll use the Edit Texture tool, and notice that the parametric mapping automatically follows the curvature of that complex surface. So we can very easily modify the horizontal and vertical size of how that texture is mapped along that curved surface. Right-click on your object and choose Show Controls. This is one of the great advantages of the parametric mapping system. If you were to modify the shape of that NURBS object, you can see that the parametric mapping automatically stays fixed onto the smooth surface that is there. We can make changes to that surface and still have the parametric mapping stay fixed on that surface. And this concludes the texture mapping tutorial.